Hello there everybody, welcome back to the channel. Dodgy Gamer here, bringing you another episode, episode 4 in fact of our postcards from the Orient series with the China national team. So we've already won two trophies so far. Today we're going to have a crack at winning a third, but it's going to be slightly more difficult than the other two. Let's find out why. And before we get started, a quick thank you. Thank you for clicking on this video, coming to check out my series. If you are new here, be sure to take a look around. If you like what you see, hit that like button on the video, subscribe to the channel, get the bell on for notifications. This is, after all, your one-stop shop for all things international management on FM21. We've got the mini-series postcards from. We've got guides to the international game. We've got experiments coming up. We've got guides to building international competitions in the editor. All sorts of things here. Make sure you're subscribed. So, yep, the competition we're going for today is the East Asian Cup. So this is a little bit different to the competitions we've played already so far in this series. First up, this is not a competition that I have created. This is one that is in the game if you just load up the base vanilla version of the game. This is one of the regional Asian tournaments and along with the Southeast Asian, the South Asian and the West Asian Championships, this is here in the game. Now, this was a tournament that was immortalized in FM20 by a certain FM Lama who managed of course Northern Mariana Islands and this has stages. You have like these different divisions so Northern Mariana, Mongolia, Guam, Macau, I think, start in the bottom group. The winner then joins uh, Taiwan, Hong Kong and North Korea in the second group. And then the winner of that group comes and joins China, Japan, South Korea. So another difference compared to the tournaments we've won so far is we're actually going to have to play three games this time. China Cup was just the two games. King's Cup was just the two games. This time it's a round robin group. So all the teams play each other once. This might be a bit more difficult to win as a result. We can't have a lucky one-off win as we did against Belgium. We can't have a poor performance but scrape through on penalties like we did against Thailand. We're going to have to perform in pretty much every game to stand a chance to win. Now first up, as you can see there, North Korea. So this must be our easiest win, our easiest potential win. Anyway, we'll put it that way. So we've got to get the three points today to get off to a good start. Then we're going to play South Korea in our second game. So we're just looking to avoid defeat there. If we can avoid defeat, if we can at least get a draw, then we've got a chance going into that final game with Japan. But if we look at the world rankings, you'll see the task we have ahead of us. Now we've moved up a bit to 74th it's not major north korea our opponents today 92nd so about 18 places below us but when we look at the other teams south korea ranked 27th in the world and japan 34th so there's quite a gulf between those two teams and us and north korea Fixtures wise, we've been a bit busy since that King's Cup final win over Luxembourg. We've been playing the Asian Cup qualifiers, so we're unbeaten so far there. We picked up a 3 0 win away to Hong Kong. We then went away to Pakistan, very easy 5 0 win. And then we played Hong Kong at home most recently, beat them 4 1. So that means in that group at the moment, we've actually already qualified. We qualified with two games to spare. Uh, our last game is against Tajikistan. Big game for them because they have to get a point to guarantee qualification. If we beat them and Hong Kong win, it might take a bit of a swing in goal difference, but their place is not assured. But anyway, that's something to concern ourselves with another time. We struggled a bit more in the friendlies though. We've taken on Iraq away. We lost 3-2 to them. I was just trying to push my boys against some of the stronger nations in Asia ahead of this East Asian tournament. We also lost at home to Iran. Last minute goal. like We equalised fairly late and then they got the winner on 90 minutes. That was a, a bit of a 
gut punch and then 1-1 one, one with UAE so that's our better performance out of those three friendlies but doesn't give me a lot of hope for this competition I do have a couple of new faces in the squad to show you a couple of youngsters regions have come through this early in the game first up Ling Yun Peng now central defense is a weak spot in the team but if you look at this guy what this guy's got at 16 I think you know He's got potential to be a big player for China going forward. He can tackle, which, you know, is a pretty decent thing for a central defender to be able to do. I mean, apart from the tackling, nothing is super outstanding. But bear in mind, he's only 16, plenty of time to develop, and already valued at 1.3 million, already had three caps, and done fairly well for us. And we've also got this guy, Zheng K, 17 years old, a right winger so he's got a lot more developing to do that's for sure but he can come into the squad now gain some experience anyway let's get into the first game it's us against north korea so we're going with the more positive version of our tactic today as we should be favorites for this one the only major injury worry for us is tyas browning he's been out but he should be fit later in the tournament for those South Korea and Japan games. All right, the team's lined up then, ready to kick this tournament off. It's the first match of the tournament. South Korea and Japan will be playing later on. Anyway, it starts promisingly with us in an advanced position. Likey cuts inside. Woozy plays in Elkison. Elkison can't finish, though. We have had that problem in some of the friendlies that Elkerson often gets himself in a strong position, but, you know, it just seems to be unable to tuck the ball away sometimes. We're relying on our wingers more for goals. Anyway, it's North Korea now. We've got to watch out that we don't fall behind to a shock early goal, but we've got the chance for a break. It's Wei Shi Hao. Is he going to play the through ball or is he going to go for things himself? He holds up play a little bit. Oh, and then he did go for it himself. Hits the side netting, though. Promising start. All right, 15 minutes in. We've had plenty of chances, just none of them on target yet. So we've got to be... Just, I think we've just got to be a little bit more patient and, you know, make sure the chance is there before we shoot. But we've given it away now to North Korea. They're looking for the break. Oh, some nice play from them to get it through to Kim Cook Bomb. And, oh, no, Kim Yoo Song has scored. That is not what we wanted. Okay, here come the North Koreans again, looking to double their lead. They, that would really put us under pressure. Oh, 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 wow. Wang Dale with the save turns it onto the post. We are under the cosh here. This is not good at all. Come on, let's deal with it. Good catch by Wang Dale. I've got some shouting to do. Well, that is not good at all. I mean, we've had the better of it in terms of XG, but not a shot on target yet. They've been very efficient getting all their shots on target, and that has made the difference. Right, so we've given them a bit of a bollocking, thrashed the old arms. It's motivated most of them, but we've got to look at some tactical changes. Now, I did, towards the end of that first half, drop back to our balanced mentality, just so we kind of take a bit more time and a bit more caution with our chances so we'll go with work the ball into the box as well but yeah nobody's having a particularly great game apart from the goalkeeper but that's not a good sign apart from the defense as well everyone's on a 6.6 .6 or below but we'll give them a chance to respond here we go we've got some action early we get the cross into Wei Xiao oh he went for one with the outside of his boot just sends it wide so again we're not getting that shot on target okay another chance for us Elkerson knocks it forward woozy just over the bar we've got to turn one of these chances in eventually but oh, xg is up to 1.11 shots are 11 ah oh, time for a substitution i think right we're going to bring in fernandinho i was trying to save him for you know, the big games against Korea and Japan, but we've got to bring him in now. I'm also going to bring in Jan Yung up front. So he's not quite as highly rated as uh, the man he's replacing, but he can do a job for us. He's done a job for us in some of our games already. So i got faith in you guys. Get out there and make a difference. 
Hopefully they actually do. Okay, here's a chance, almost straight away after the substitutions. But we've given the ball away, and now we're under pressure on the break. Kim Yu Song. Oh, Wang Dali. Oh, no. Oh, I thought... I thought we'd averted the danger, but... Goalkeeper had come off his line. The defenders, I don't know what they were doing there. They were just slow to react. Oh, they just stopped. Look, look, that guy in the middle. He just stopped when the save was made. Oh, God. Right, so we've made some changes. We're going attacking. We're telling players to push up more. We're going to leave ourselves more exposed at the back. But if we lose 2-0 to North Korea, it's basically tournament over. Right, we're starting out here with a North Korean counter. Ju Jong Choi, this is the danger that we're going to expose ourselves too much. But 15 minutes to go, it's not looking good. Oh, so many players underperforming at this point. I'm going to bring on Jeng K, one of the youngsters I highlighted to you before the game. We'll just give him the runabout. <sighs> Don't know if it'll make any difference, but we can go much higher with our line we can go with shoot on sight yeah that's about all we've got left it's going to take a real miracle to get anything out of this now very disappointing here this could put me in danger because of course the chinese fa said they they don't want us to win but they want us to avoid being embarrassed or something like that great job we did in this game Okay, so we've moved on to the South Korea game. Big news is Elkerson has been dropped. We're bringing in Yuning from the start. Elkerson can sit on the bench. Hopefully that'll give him a bit of a kick up the backside and make him a bit more thirsty in front of goal. Well, been a pretty quiet first half so far, but we're starting with the ball here. Let's hopefully keep it as we launch this attack. Fernandinho, he's got support from the fullback, but he loses the ball. Uh, not what we wanted to see. South Korea give it straight back to us, though. Very kind of them. We return the favour. Lovely stuff. You love to see a bit of quality passing at international level. Here comes South Korea, though. They're looking to get it into the centre. Oh, it comes back out to the flank, and that is a pretty good goal. Thankfully, it's been disallowed. Phew. Anyway, not yeah, not looking great so far. At least we've had you know a decent proportion of shots on target this time. We're slightly edging it in terms of XG, but South Korea have looked more threatening coming forward. So we went with motivating words at half time. I'm pleased with how things are going. We can win this. Let's see if that gives them. Oof! Or oh, again, we start the half with a corner and a header going close. We'll see if that can give them the boost they need. Doesn't look like it yet. Right, here comes South Korea, but oof, we intercept the throw in. Here comes Woozy, who's been ineffective so far, but he plays in Allen. Allen with the control. Ooh, a last-ditch tackle from the South Korean defenders there. And now they get the chance to launch the counter-attack. King Sung Day gets it into Cecenia. Oh, come on, let's get the ball off them. In case you're wondering where Son is of Spurs fame, this tournament, as it takes place in December, so outside the international window, it's domestic players only, which for us is great because we've just got that one player in La Liga. Everyone else is domestic. For Korea, it means they're missing a couple of stars. Right, another chance for South Korea here. They work a short free kick routine. Again, they're offside. I, I could see that one clearly before it was called. So nothing to worry about too much there. We get the replay this time, but yeah, there's two players in an offside position there, even though the goal scorer wasn't one of them. Right, time for some substitutions. I'm going to take off Woozy. He's been ineffective again, so we're bringing on Jang ZJ in his place. And Alan's been pretty rubbish as well, plus he's on a yellow, so we're going to bring on Junmin for him. Still finely poised as we come into the final stretch of the game, the final 15 minutes. Can we sneak a winner here? Right, let's see if Elkinson can do what I expected him, hoped him to do. We'll bring him on at this late stage. He should be all pumped up, having missed out on his chance to start. Uh, hopefully he can make amends for a poor performance against North Korea here. He can't. 
Well, that's disappointing. We were we were second best in that second half by quite some margin. It's a result that I would have been happy with had we been able to beat North Korea in the first game. If we'd have won that first game and then got the draw here, we'd be in a fantastic position against Japan. North Korea, Japan was a draw. Interesting, North Korea taking the lead on 90 plus 1, Japan equalising on 90 plus 2. So what does that mean for the table? Well, both Koreas are on 4 points. So, yeah, it's over. We can't win it because even if we beat Japan, we go on to 4 points. But there's got to be at least a point coming out of that Korea derby. So it's either North or South Korea that are going to win this thing. So I decided to play that last game off camera, seeing as it, it didn't mean anything anymore. And we finally got a win. Uh, Wei Shihao and Elkison finally popping up with a goal near the end there. South Korea would win the other game, which means, of course, they become champions, the East Asian champions. So well played to them. We end up second, I guess, on head-to-head -head results. North Korea beating us. Ch uh, Japan, big disappointment for them as hosts, finishing bottom. Well, we couldn't make it three out of three as far as tournaments go. It was that opening match with North Korea. If we could have got the win there, then you know we could have been champions of this tournament as well. But... There's still a chance that we get another tournament under our belts very soon. So, as you know, I've created lots of international competitions, added them to this particular game. One of them is coming up next. So, again, it's another friendly tournament hosted by an Asian nation. We've got the Banga Bandu Gold Cup. What a fantastic name. This is a tournament held every two years, organized and hosted by Bangladesh. And we've been invited to take part. Remember, I this isn't something that I fixed or anything beforehand. Teams just randomly get invited. China were invited to this one. So as you can see, this is the competition's lineup. Palestine are in as the defending champions. This is a tournament where the previous winners are invited back. Bangladesh are obviously there as host. We've also got Botswana, Vanuatu, and Macau. So not exactly a stellar lineup of teams in world football, but again, a bit like that King's Cup in Thailand, a place where I think we've got a decent chance of winning. So our next episode in this postcards series, we're going to have moved into 2022, but it'll be January 2022. And we will be taking on Macau and Bangladesh in that group stage. Now, this is a tournament where the top two then go through to the semi-final round. So hopefully then we will have a semi-final and maybe even a final to bring you as well. So I'm uh, looking forward to all of that. I do hope you are looking forward to it as well. Even though we didn't do particularly well today, if you did enjoy the episode and the look at the East Asian Championship, then hit that like button. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel as well. Get the notification bell on for all future episodes. I'm Dodgy Gamer, and I'll see you again soon. Thank you.